day guys it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous I do mean over the top beautiful day <coughs> here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in paradise at bugs in a jar farm where I think it is about 78 degrees here on it is a lovely Friday evening beginning that would be July 29th 2022 while the rest of the world bakes here in the Finger Lakes of New York it is a gorgeous evening and uh, as we hear the sounds of planet nibbling in the background it is Friday so you know what that means you know what that means and uh, it is time for my ecological meltdown roundup rant where uh, I go over to check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com for their weekly laundry list of their weekly, what is it, cavalcade of catastrophes unfolding on this <coughs> collapsing planet. And I did not realize that today, July 29th, apparently if I'm reading this correctly, I think I'm reading this correctly, can a country have too many humans? <clears throat> Can a country have too many humans? Nepal is about to find out. Hmm. Nepal is expected to announce a doubling of its human population. But critics say the country's singular focus on increasing the human population has overlooked the impacts on communities of tigers living near national parks and wildlife reservations who have suffered an increase in human tiger encounters. They say, the critics say, the country has exceeded the population of humans that it can comfortably accommodate even as the government says it has room for more of the primates. Officials say there are various actions to address a surplus of humans, including housing problem humans in zoos. I think we already do that, especially here in the U.S., where we house our problem humans in zoos. We can gift the humans to foreign governments as a form of diplomacy. Yes, I think uh, Mexico has been gifting the United States with humans uh, as a form of diplomacy for how many years? And uh, yes, and as a last resort, culling, culling the primates. Yes, yes. July 29th, International Human Day. Obviously, guys, uh, Tigger is not here. Tigger's upset that he was not invited. Uh, it is International Tiger Day. And there's already people, of course, in Nepal griping that 250 tigers uh, is too many tigers. Uh, too many tigers, uh, you're already getting pushback. What is the, popu the population of, okay, we have 250 tigers. Uh, so 250 tigers and 30 million 215,874 humans. So 30 million humans, 250 tigers, but there are too many tigers in Nepal on International Tiger Day. I wonder what Tigger would have to say about that. Tigger and his Trump hat. All right, what else is going on? What other kind of day is it today other than International Human and Tiger Day? 
Okay, guys, I'm proud to say I have virtually no clue what blockchain, what the word blockchain means. I think what blockchain is, is where they mine these things like bitcoins or whatever. But whatever the hell blockchain is, I am so proud to be a clueless moron having no, I, well, a very vague idea. I think it means you know, burning up all of these, uh, burning up a planet is what it means, burning up a planet. Okay, uh, so you try to tell me what the hell this means. Beyond Bored Apes, Beyond Bored Apes, I guess they're talking about humans, Blockchain polarizes wildlife conservation community. Uh, blockchain technologies, various applications are being exploited for use in wildlife conservation. The technology's potential might be immense, but downsides such as a massive carbon footprint and the imposition of Western technology to dictate resource management in the global south raises logistical and ethical questions. Yes, most proponents and critics of blockchain agree on one thing. The technology is still in the early stages, and if it is bad, uh, if it has a massive carbon footprint and imposes uh, Western technology to dictate resource management, and you say planet eating in the global south, you better believe that uh, blockchain is only in its infancy. Gee, you will not believe this. I've been, we've been reporting on this for the past several uh, issues. Would you believe that this big palm oil corporation mixed in legal, legal troubles is still, is still clearing Sumatran forest? Hmm. A palm oil country has resumed clearing forest in its concession in Indonesia's Lucer ecosystem, the only place on earth where tigers, orangutans, and rhinos coexist. Uh, between September and February, according to Rainforest Action Network, they cleared uh, 761 acres of the Lucere ecosystem. <coughs> and the Rainforest Action Network says it is possible, it is possible that palm oil from trees grown on this deforested land may have entered the global supply chain. Yes, imagine that. Okay, I have been uh, wondering about this for years. You, you, you know, about uh, these deforestation statistics coming out of the Brazilian government, a, a, an arm of the Brazilian government, which is actually the space agency. It's kind of like Brazil's version of, of NASA because they have all these, you know, these satellites. Well, guess what? Who can better monitor a deforestation in Brazil than a bunch of high-tech satellites, right? So, uh, to you, I've just always assumed that uh, these statistics uh, that you see even coming out of this supposedly autonomous uh, agency are, you know, are, are completely a joke. But uh, they're, they're the best you, you can trust. They're the most trustworthy and take a wild guess uh, what is happening to the uh, space agency's deforestation monitoring program in Brazil. 
Brazil's new deforestation board sparks fear of censorship hmm, of forest loss and fires. A new a new council set by you know Bozo Nero's Brazilian government to vet deforestation and forest data from the country's space ag agency has been widely slammed as a political ploy to aid President Jair Bozo Nero's re-election bid. Uh, the the uh, National Institute of Space Research has analyzed deforestation and forest fire data since 1988. Uh, and is globally, re still amazingly, uh, globally renowned for its monitoring expert. But guess what? You will not find uh, the, the data on the new Brazilian government council, you know, to look at Brazilian deforestation rates. Uh, Bo the Bozo Nero government has questioned the credibility of the space agency's data since taking office in 2019, drawing outrage from scientists and researchers for claiming that data showing a spike in deforestation under Bozo Nero was false. Yeah, I bet. Uh... All right, we do have, uh, you know, I will give this hopium that they have uh, reintroduced wild bison in, into England. A lot of people don't realize that there's bison and badgers and beavers in England, the three bees. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, they're also releasing beavers, I mean English beavers. Uh, bison, beavers, and badgers. I think the badgers are, are, are still being pretty much shot, but uh, they're actually rewilding bison and beavers in England. Good for them. All right, but while uh, bison and beavers uh, coming back to England, we're going to go down to the uh, Congo. We're going to go down to sub-Saharan Africa. I actually saw this on the mainstream media, a long involved piece, amazingly. I figured Rhett would be talking about it today. In the Congo, a carbon sink like no other on the planet risks being carved up for oil. Otherwise, you know, carved up means obliterated off the face of the planet for more oil in your gas-sucking truck. New research has revealed that the peatlands of the Congo Basin are actually 15% larger than originally thought. Well, for about a year, then they'll be 15% smaller than originally thought, and probably in 10 years, you know, they'll be 90, you know what. Anyway. This area of swampy forest holds an estimated 29 billion metric tons of carbon, which is the amount emitted globally through the burning of fossil fuels in three years. Uh, beginning yesterday, take a wild guess, <coughs> the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo where two-thirds of these peatlands lie, has begun to auction off the rights to explore for oil. Yes, in 27 blocks across the country, scientists and conservationists have slammed the move, which the government says correctly is necessary to fund its operations. Opponents say the oil exploration blocks overlap with parts of the peatlands, mature rainforest, protected areas, and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I'm pretty sure they're talking about Virunga National Park. 
uh, is one of the uh, places that is being opened up to oil development. I'm thinking, reading this main, it's the French oil company, Total, I love that name, Total, I did just get right to it, Total, Total Oil Company. Uh, is the one getting ready to start drilling in a Virunga National Park. All right, moving on. You will not believe that for residents of Jakarta's Port District, coal is the neighbor no one wants. Do you think so? Uh, they, I don't know if I remember covering this story here on Manga Bay, or rather I saw it in the mainstream media a couple of weeks ago, this hilarious knee slapper. Nigerian refugees in Cameroon turned biomass into charcoal to spare trees. Yes, I'm sure uh, if you're a Nigerian refugee fleeing to the Cameroon uh, to keep from getting a, mach a machete through the back of your head, let me tell you where sparing trees is on your list of concerns. Alright, so what is the fire forecast for the summer of 2022? What a surprise. As the Amazon burns, only the weather can ward off a catastrophe now. Yeah, good luck weather warding off a catastrophe in the Amazon rainforest. The Brazilian Amazon saw the highest number of fires for the month of June in 15 years with 2,562 major fires detected, an increase of more than 11% since last year. The first half of this year had 7,533 major fires, the most since 2019, according to data from Guess Who, is the space agency who, as of now, will not be allowed to report their wildfire data. Gee. Hmm. Let's see. So, so much. That's probably, I guess, the last time you're going to hear that. <clears throat> On June 23rd, the Brazilian government issued a decree banning the use of fires to manage forests throughout the country for the next 120 days, which I think is right about the time of the election, is about 120 days from now, if I'm not mistaken, when then you can, after the election, you can just keep right on burning. Uh, experts say they are skeptical, skeptical about this ban, noting that similar measures have failed to stop the burning in previous years, and say now the weather is the only thing that can help curb the increase in fires as the dry season unfolds. I was actually reading a long article in the mainstream media yesterday about this uh, latest boondoggle going down there in the Yucatan Peninsula. The Maya train. Mexico's Maya train chugs forward, but at what cost to habitats and communities? Uh, the price tag is now at $20 billion. $20 billion to make this little uh, absolutely totally indefensible just a little tourist train going around the Yucatan Peninsula, 958 mile long, 1,525 kilometers. Uh, this little tourist train 
uh, across five states in the Yucatan Peninsula. The project has faced dozens of legal roadblocks for its impact on the environment and lack of consent from local and indigenous communities. And of course, the uh, president of Mexico, whatever that, whatever that guy's name is, that planet eater, uh, saying that 20 billion, 20, a thousand miles, 20 billion dollars for less than a thousand miles. What is that per mile on this absolute uh, planet eating, uh, jungle killing scheme to bring the tourist in? Uh, here is this uh, article, which I'm not going to insult my intelligence and yours about uh, this shade-grown coffee uh, and whether it's greenwashing or not. Uh, you know, I live down there in Peru. I actually bought some land down in this uh, shade-grown organic coffee uh, area of Peru. Guys, come on. I've seen it with my own eyes, okay? What's your shade-grown organic coffee uh, it, it, it is doing to the planet uh, down there? Uh, anybody, any little lefty greeny thinking you're saving the planet with your shade grown organic coffee i got some really bad news for you anyway i'm not gonna go off into my shade grown organic coffee rant okay i was actually shocked to hear that there's a hundred thousand uh, orangutans left uh, on the planet uh, but uh, it sounds like at least a fourth of them are getting ready to be gone in the next 10 years. If not, uh, I will be shocked if only as deforestation in Borneo now threatens one in four orangutans. Deforestation in Borneo will destroy the habitat of <coughs> more than 26 thousand orangutans with a quarter of the population of the critically endangered species over the next 10 years a new study shows uh, researchers used historical data and modeling with known drivers of deforestation to project that orangutan habitat a tent the size of Italy could be lost over the next decade. Uh, forests at highest risk of deforestation include those near areas that have already experienced forest loss as well as industrial timber and oil palm plantations. Yep, yep, yep. All right, here, you, you know, whenever I hear about these mango, mangrove restoration projects, you, you know, good for the mangrove restoration projects, but it's just like we're, we're living in two worlds. Uh, has anybody seen what a mangrove forest looks like in sea level rise. You can go down there to the Everglades National Park. I've seen it with my own eyes, just like I've seen uh, th this BS greenwashing organic shade-grown coffee crap. Uh, I really don't under... But, but anyway, I, I guess if we have a few more mangrove trees for a few more years, they're all going underwater. Uh, anyway, uh, what else? I got to get up and make some creamed corn. Uh, 
Okay, we're always talking about palm oil and all that. What is going on with industrial soy? Industrial soy drives deforestation spike in southeastern Brazil. Do you think so? Uh, a new report from in the NGO Amazon Conservation found that deforestation is rising. Wow, in the southeastern state of Mato Grosso, due in large part to industrial soy production. The report said there has been at least 100,000 acres, otherwise known as about 42,000 hectares, of direct soy deforestation. There's a new term uh, for the collapse, soy deforestation in Mato Grosso just since 2020, meaning primary rainforest in those areas was cleared with fire for the sole purpose of cultivating soy. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? All right, uh, here's more stories on International Tiger Day. Uh, anyway, been over that. Uh, Native savage stuff. Do you believe we're going to go over to Turkey? Uh, let's do two more here, guys. I got to start making some creamed corn. Turkey's authoritarian development ignores planetary boundaries. Well, I mean, why are they picking on Turkey? Uh, the planet's authoritarian development ignores planetary boundaries. Turkey is an increasingly autocratic country yes, yeah, since Recep Erdogan and his AKP political party came to power in 2002. Yes, it has failed so far to take meaningful action against the steady increase of its greenhouse gas emissions. Do you think so? Turkey may also be exceeding limits. Hmm. Too many of the nine planetary boundaries critical to the survival of civilization. Yes. In addition to unregulated carbon emissions, experts are concerned over the nation's worsening air and plastic pollution, uh, altered land use, due to new mega infrastructure projects and biodiversity harm. For the past two decades, Turkey's economic growth has been based on carbon intensive sectors, including fossil fuel energy, transportation, construction, mining, and heavy industry, all heavily supported by the state via subsidies and lax environmental laws. Do you think so? But we're going to wind up right here where I actually saw a monarch butterfly today. He was not on uh, the milkweed. He was on the Joe Pie weed. Uh, so we actually have one monarch butterfly bug that bugs in a jar. As if you haven't heard this ten times already, monarch butterflies are officially endangered. Yes, meaning the species is likely to go extinct without significant intervention. The number of migratory monarch butterflies has dropped more than 95% since the 1980s, uh, the mainstream media is saying 
percent since the 1980s. Do your math and plant your milkweed or your Joe Pie weed. But anyway, uh, I have got to wrap up today's ecological meltdown roundup rant and get out there and uh, cream some corn while I still can. The corn is coming in in upstate New York. I did not plant a cornfield this year after what I went through last year. So uh, I am keeping the local agrarian economy alive uh, here in the Finger Lakes. And no, it is not organic corn. I'm going to go have me some... Uh, don't know if it's GMO or not. Uh, since it did not say non-GMO, I'm assuming I'm getting ready to cream a bunch of GMOs. Get out there and cream some GMOs while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, a log. Who's that coming up?